Welcome everybody to another episode of The Cody Miller Show, the ultimate swimming related show here on my YouTube channel. I'm your Olympic swimmer host, Cody Miller. Thank you guys for joining me today as we talk about a whole bunch of things in the world of swimming, training techniques, diet, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, right off the top, first of all, my camera is focused today. I apologize, last week's show, the camera was definitely out of focus, like the whole show, I didn't notice. I'm an idiot, I'm, not, I'm new to this stuff, I'm trying, but it looks like it's in focus today, so that's good. Um, the second thing, my face is a little bit sunburned, as you can see, I got some sun this weekend. I've had a lot of people asking me that on Instagram, like, why are you so sunburned? Um, I flew to Florida last weekend just for two really quick days. I was really only there for about a day. Um, Allie's on spring break right now and her family has a condo in Fort Lauderdale and um, they have their niece, my, my niece Izzy down there and um, so she's on vacation and I kind of surprised the family and showed up just for a quick day, you know, um, just for a quick weekend trip and uh, went to the beach, swam at the pool, had a lot of fun. I posted a couple videos on my Instagram for, for people to see. And yeah, and I definitely, that's one day of sun. Like, look at this, one day, of, look at how red my forehead is. Isn't that crazy? That was one day of sun, like just at the beach. I mean, I've been, we've been swimming inside for months and I haven't really been out in the sun at all. And I mean, I tan pretty well, like I get pretty tan, but that's, so that's what's going on with my forehead right now. It's, it's not too tender, it's okay. Um, the second thing off the top, uh, in my last video, there was another dog here at my house. That is not my dog. Oh, I have had so many people ask me about that. That's actually my friend Ashley Knighty's dog. And for anyone who's been watching my vlogs for a long period of time, you might have seen her a while ago. She used to swim here at IU. She's retired now, but still lives here. And I was basically dog sitting for like two weeks. And so her dog's just kind of hanging out at my house. So if you ever see that little black chihuahua, he's like a little black and white chihuahua hanging out at my house. That's, that's whose dog that is. Um, let's see. Uh, the one other item before we get started, uh, this episode is pre-recorded um, on Tuesday. You guys are seeing this probably on Friday, and that's because if you're watching this now, I'm now in Texas for the Men's NCAA Swimming Championship, which right now I'm like super, super excited about. Um, this is really the first year in pretty much 50 years where the IU men's swim team has a legit shot at winning the national championship. I mean, it could happen. You know, we we were in the running last year and we ended up getting third. And um, this year I'm really excited. The team's been training really well and swimming really well. And so as you're watching this, I'm definitely down there in Austin, Texas for the meet. I'm super excited about that. And I think it's going to be a blast. I'm going to get to train with uh, a bunch of other Olympic swimmers from other teams. You know, all the pros who go and watch the meet and cheer on their teams swim together. So I'll be swimming with some of the Texas guys. I'll definitely be swimming with Caleb Dressel and probably Ryan Murphy. Some of the Cal guys will get together and train. Um, so that'll be super fun. And I think that's it for all the items right off the top. So... Without further ado, let's get into our main topics for the show. And first off, how do you get your question answered by me on one of my in one of my vlogs or in on the Cody Miller show? It's really easy. Make sure you guys are following me on Instagram at Cody Miller. Um, you can ask me a question anytime for a quick question, um, or if you want to get a main topic on the show, simply send an email to the Cody Miller Show at gmail.com. That's the Cody Miller Show at gmail.com. Send in your email, and that's how we get our main topics here. That's kind of how I'm doing it. I'm pulling it from the viewers. I was like, how am I going to get questions? I'm just going to strictly ask the viewers. Okay, we're still in focus, so we're good. And um, so our first topic of the day comes to us from a, a whole bunch of people have been asking me this. So this isn't from one specific person, but this is Lily King, my girl, Lily King's collegiate NCAA legacy. So to put into context what is happening right now, Lily swam her last collegiate meet last weekend, her last NCAA championships in Texas last weekend. So she is now officially a professional swimmer um, because she is now accepting money to swim. Um, she, she's exhausted her NCAA eligibility so she can no longer comp compete collegiately, which means she can now accept money. And a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what do I think about Lily as a pro? What do I think about her career? And I just, I just wanna highlight a few things. Um, number one, there's a really cool photo of her on her Instagram where she's in the water after her race holding up eight fingers like this. Um, that's because she won eight individual NCAA championship titles. 
That is, I don't believe that has ever happened before for a female breaststroker. There's one, uh, I believe Brendan Hansen did it on the men's side, never lost in college. Um, but I believe Lily's the first woman to ever do it, um, which is mighty impressive. So she's in just a, fr just she's in that club of people who have, who have swept NCs in every, in every single one of their signature events, all of their collegiate career, which is amazing and outstanding on its own. But I think the more important thing to look at when you look at Lily's career is the impact that she's had on the records and the impact that she's had on moving the the events in a in a crazy fast direction. So looking at the trajectory of her races, she dropped the 100-yard breaststroke, American, U.S. Open, and NCAA record by a larger margin than anyone has ever dropped any 100-yard race in history. She dropped that time, the U.S. Open, American record, NCAA record time by two full seconds over the course of four years. That is something that has never happened before. Um, that's like, a, that's on the same level of like Caleb Dressel going 17 in a 50 freestyle. Um, and I still think Lily, Lily bringing, when she went into college, the, I believe the NCAA record in the Hunter Brushwick was like a 57-8 or 57-7. And she just went 55-7. That's insane. That's like, that's crazy, crazy, crazy. And the same for her 200 Brushwick. I think the record was like a 204. Um, maybe even a 204 high when she got into college. And now she just went 2029 in the 200 yard breaststroke. So just the the magnitude of what she's done, not just going eight for eight and being undefeated, but by how significant of a, of a margin she actually dropped those record times is amazing. It's outstanding. It's something we've never seen before. Um, it's it's rare and it's and it's admirable. And and the, the crazy thing I tell people is it's like what she what she has done, like what she did her senior year this year is more impressive than people realize for a couple reasons. The biggest reason being, she won NCAAs as a freshman, she then went on to make the Olympic team, she then went on to win the Olympics, and then the following year she went on to repeat as champion, winning world championships, defending her title, re-beating Yulia, the, her Russian foe, and breaking the world record. And then, the following year winning NCAAs again, and then her senior year, this year, winning again and setting records. When you put it into perspective, the fact that she she went from winning to winning the Olympics to a setting a world record to then continually to drop her own records and continuing to go best times is astounding because it's so hard for for athletes to, once they've reached a certain level of success, to stay there. It's so hard for athletes once they've won, once they've achieved that pinnacle, once they've summited Everest and they're on top, to stay at that level and continue that momentum. And over the course of Lily's career, her momentum hasn't stopped, it's accelerated. And that's insane, like, I mean, you can point to example after example after example of people who go to the Olympics, win medals, and then drop off, and then you never see them again. Or they go through slumps, or, it, or, or, or it, it's just, it's a rarity to see the level of consistency and then even rarer to see the level of consi consistency plus the ability to continue to improve at such a, by such a substantial margin for her to drop that much time. I mean, winning all of those championships is amazing, Out crazy. Um, setting a world record is crazy, but but her level of consistency and her level of drive and not losing any of her edge is something that makes her the greatest female breaststroker of all time, in my opinion. Um, just by the, I mean, we've seen we've seen people in the past set records, we've seen people in the past win events, and we've seen people be really consistent, but never at such a high level, in my opinion. When you just look at the data, when you just look at how much she's broken records by, it's it's pretty amazing. So, um, if you guys don't follow Lily on Instagram, follow her, congratulate her, because what she's done is is something that we may never see again. And in the sport of swimming, it's something to celebrate. 
and it's something that people need to talk about and that's why I'm and obviously she's like she's like my little sister so like obviously I'm gonna hype her up a little bit but it's cool like it's really really cool it's exciting Lily I'm proud of you thank you for being my training partner and always making me laugh and smile on practice and not getting mad at me when I put a camera in your face that's cool um, but yeah, congratulate her, tweet at her, tweet her a message on Twitter and just say, hey, like, cause, cause people know she's great and know she's fast, but when you look at the whole thing, it's like, it's really mind blowing. All right, enough on that subject. And now on to our second topic of the day. And our second topic of the day comes to us from Charlie. And the topic is drug cheating. And let me pull up your email really quick, Charlie. Okay. Uh, Charlie says, hey Cody, greetings from North Dakota. I was wondering if you could give some thoughts on drug cheating. How much of a problem is it and do you think people are getting getting away with it even with testing administered by organizations like USADA? Love the videos, keep the grinding. Thank you for sending in that email, I appreciate it. Uh, I don't wanna talk about this too much, but there's definitely cheating going on in the sport of swimming. There are definitely people that I've raced against that I know have, that I, I can't say that I know because you, you don't know unless someone has, actually no, I can't say, I can say that there are people that I have raced that I know have cheated or are, or are cheating because of their history of failed drug tests, right? Unless they're the most unlucky people in the world, and sometimes that happens, there are people out there who are definitely doing drugs. Fortunately, I personally believe that in the sport of swimming, I do believe that there's cheating. I do think there are ex there are examples of that out there. However, I don't think it's on a really large scale. Like I, I think that, and I think that that's particularly because there's just not a lot of money in the sport of swimming. So in in the sport, like take cycling for example, when when doping was at its highest, at its peak in cycling, those cyclists, I mean the top 30, 40, 50, 60 cyclists in the world were making lots of money. Like we're, we're doing very well because there were so many sponsorship opportunities in that sport. And in the sport of swimming, we're nowhere near that level, right? And so I believe that there's like a direct correlation between where the money goes. That's also where people start doing things that are, you know, just that compromise their integrity for money. And in our sport, that's not so much of a problem because there's not as much to be gained from a financial standpoint. Um, but there's definitely cheating. It's definitely happening. I mean, I've gone on record saying Soon Yang should be banned for life. Like that dude is has failed multiple drug tests. He he has a a trail of breadcrumbs that is just it's so concerning. Um, and there's all kinds of there's all kinds of issues with corruption within different organizations out there. I mean, goodness, it's it's crazy. Um, I do have a pretty substantial amount of faith in USADA and our in our drug testing system. I believe that the American system is the best, although not perfect, it is the best. And I trust that, you know, that our system is 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 working at a higher level than just about everywhere else in the world. But it is a problem. It does exist. Um, and that's that's what I'll say about it. But but it's nowhere near like the level like like I said, like like in cycling or or in or in other sports. And that is simply because there's not as much finance there's not as much money to gain, to be gained. Not yet at least, you know. I mean hopefully hopefully we get to that point where that's a whole other topic. I'm gonna. I don't want to go off on a tangent here. That's that's all I'm gonna say on that topic for now. Um, I might elaborate that on in later videos. Thank you very much for the question, Charlie. And our third topic of the day comes to us from CGJ. I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, anyway. And that topic is fueling your body for collegiate athletes. And let me pull up your email. Okay. And CGJ writes, my, uh, oh, Chloe, okay. My name is Chloe. I have watched your vlogs and videos ever since I started, ever since you started your YouTube channel. I love them. Thank you so much. Getting insight into high level swimming and training at IU has been very, benef very fun and beneficial to watch. Thank you. As well as discussing swimming at a deeper level. Your mental prowess and positivity are very admirable, especially while going through injuries and off meets. Thank you very much. Keep inspiring the swimming world, Cody. I was wondering how college student athletes fuel their bodies while on campus with the restrictions such as cafeteria food, uh, or how much money do you spend on recovery, pre-race shakes, etc., while training at a high level? Thank you. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, thank you for the email. Uh, yeah, 
It's difficult being a collegiate athlete, especially because the majority of American universities require freshmen to stay in dorms, most of them. And when you're staying in a dorm, your, your food options are limited and cafeteria food is not great. Now I will say that I can only speak for my experiences and for living here at, at Indiana, but our dorm food now is better than it was when I was in college like eight years ago. It's better. Um, so it's improving. It's not great, but it's better. Um, and there are some some upsides, like here at IU and a lot of universities across the country, a lot of like Division I programs and, and other schools as well have athlete dining halls with better food, healthier food, not as processed, um, you know, much more fruits and vegetable options, those types of things. So we do have those as an option. Um, also, there was there was a really cool thing. Literally the year after I graduated from college, the year after my NCAA eligibility ended, the NCAA passed a rule that said that universities could now provide meals and snacks for all athletes, which like was a violation beforehand. So in our team room here at IU, there are always snacks and stuff in the fridge for people to eat. There's always like applesauce packets. There's always bars. There's always relatively healthy snacks you know, crackers with peanut butter, whatever, um, for people to have, like, you know, coming from class if they don't have time to, like, grab a whole meal. So, like, it's available, which is nice, and that wasn't always the case, so it's getting better. Um, but to answer your question, uh, I, I probably, how much do I spend on food a month? Goodness. I mean, Allie and I go grocery shopping pretty much every Sunday, and we almost never have a grocery bill under $200. Um, so that's like, you know, $800 a month. Um, and then we do HelloFresh meals, which I actually, I don't technically pay for because I've got an ongoing sponsorship with HelloFresh. Um, so I, okay. So actually I do pay for it, but I get it, I, I get it back. It, it, I don't need to get into details, but so, so there's that. And then I also spend probably four or $500 a month on, on supplements on, on, um, you know, on post-workout uh, shakes on different vitamins, on stuff like that. So, I don't know, it really adds up. I mean, some weeks we have like $300 grocery tabs. It really adds up, so it's a lot. I've never like really racked it up. Um, but yeah, um, being a collegiate athlete is tough. Making the right decisions isn't always the easiest, but there are options. I'm, I'm at least, like, once I, like, like I said earlier, I can only speak from my experiences, but it's getting better for collegiate athletes out there right now. Um, it's constantly improving, but it is a challenge. It's a struggle, and you have to do a lot of meal planning ahead of time. That was something that I certainly had to do, was plan meals, prep meals ahead of time. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say on that subject for now. Um, thank you very much for the question, Chloe. And our fourth topic of the day comes to us from Paige. And Paige asks, it's about going vegan. Paige asks, Cody, would you ever consider going vegan? And what are your thoughts on vegan athletes? Thanks so much. All right, Paige, let's talk about this. I, what did I just knock over? I just knocked some stuff underneath. Oops. Um, no joke, I actually, I did, I did a speaking event last week and I, I literally just knocked over my medals. These were sitting on my um, on my little little desk drawer that rolls out underneath me. I try to bring those to most of my speaking events, so like I can let people hold my medals and stuff. But my my medal just fell on the ground. Anyway, okay. So it, as far as going vegan, I have I have tested and tried being vegan. I think that there's a lot of benefits to cutting out certain things that that certain people's bodies don't necessarily process don't process the right way. Um, I mean, there, I know a lot of people who are vegan because they want to make good ethical decisions because they don't, they feel like, you know, animals shouldn't, shouldn't have to die for them to live. And I think that's very admirable. I think that's wonderful. And if people want to make that choice, that's great. Um, I have experimented with it and I, I actually went a couple weeks where I was slowly weaning myself off of meat and I was eating vegan meals. And for me, I was just, I couldn't do it because I struggled with it for a few different reasons. I was really, really weak um, because my body doesn't process certain vegan proteins very well. So for example, soy, which is a big one, um, and pea. 
Pea protein is really big in the, in the vegan community, and those were like the two things that I was using to try to supplement my protein intake, and, it, and my body doesn't process those things very well. So when you can't do peas and you can't do soy, and um, I'm a little iffy on beans. Like there's only, there's, there, there's only a, few, a, few different, a few kinds of beans that I can, that I can eat well that my body processes well. Um, and so that really limited my options even more so than already being limited. And um, yeah, but I do know I do know some athletes who are straight up vegan, and that's cool. It's it's a challenge. It's hard, um, but I do think you know Ali cooks some some vegan meals here here and there. Um, you know I I already do cert some vegan things like I don't do milk, especially like not you know I rarely do dairy. I don't I don't eat cheese very often. I mean I love cheese like I love pizza. I love those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, ultimately as I. I basically went a couple weeks where I got to the point where I was only eating meat like once a day and it was for dinner and I just found that I was low on energy and maybe that's on me because I wasn't doing a good enough job preparing my meals. Maybe, you know, I mean there's a whole like, I could talk for, I mean, we could have like an hour long conversation about this, um, but I think that it's great for certain people. There, th I'll say this, there are so many different diets out there and there's not one diet for everyone. There are, you know, there's di there's the paleo diet, the, the keto diet, you know, people who are vegan, whatever, all that stuff. And y you have to kind of find a diet that works best for you. And for me, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination of things, right? Like I do a lot of lean proteins. Like for me, like a lot of really lean, like I process, my body processes lean chicken breast really, really well. And so I eat a lot of that. Um, and that's kind of all I'll say on that. Maybe I'll, t I'll talk more about that in the future. But um, my, uh, my, my massage therapist, the guy you guys see in my videos all the time, John, JP, the guy who's always pressing on my chest and putting cups on me and hurting me, he's totally vegan. He's been vegan for years, years and years and years. And he's extremely healthy for, you know, for his age. Um, so, yeah, so that's cool. You know, I got no, no problem with people. Just, just I, the one thing, that's why I don't talk so much about diets is because, there isn't, I, I don't believe that there's one diet that's gonna work for everybody else. Like I can't tell you, hey, this is the Cody Miller diet, go do that, that's what's gonna make you great. Like it doesn't work like that. Um, so you just you just have to do what's best for you. I'm trying to get better about giving advice and not being preachy. Okay, number five, thank you for the question, um, Paige. And our fifth question of the day comes to us from I Miss My, I think is, is the name that sent this in. Um, okay. Hey Cody, when you were uh, here, let me let me start this again. This topic is on on swimming burnout. That's the that's this topic. Hey Cody, when you were a teen in high school, your day and your day wasn't going that great, and you remember you had practice right after school. What motivated you to dive into the dreaded pool? Also, you've been swimming your whole life, and I'm sure you've probably had burnout or at a time where you where you were really tired of swimming. What kept you going? Okay, so. Great question. Thank you so much for the question. Um, for this question, I'm going to specifically talk about when I was in high school. And for me, I never, I, I'm rare, like I, this is not going to be the case for everyone, but I'm rare in a sense that I never experienced swimming burnout in high school until honestly my senior year of high school. My senior year of high school, I was like kind of burnt out and done, like ready to go to college. And, and my senior year of high school didn't go very well. Um, but for me, when I was, you know, middle school and early years of high school, um, I always looked forward to going to the pool because at, at school, I was a bit of a loser. Like I didn't have any friends at school, um, that weren't swimmers, that people that I didn't swim with. So I had a couple of swimming friends that I went to high school with. Um, but ultimately like the majority of my friends, like the community of people that I saw myself a part of that I liked being with were high school swimmers. And so for me, it was like, Going to the pool was always an escape and was always a place for me to be myself and enjoy myself and have friends um, and communicate with people. Whereas at high school, ever I mean, I just wasn't very social, didn't talk to very many people, and I always wore like swimming shirts and um, like athletic shoes, and people thought I was kind of weird and lame. And, and I got made fun of and stuff, you know. I'll, I'll go into that stuff in a, in a later video. But yeah, I mean, so. As far as burnout goes, my senior year, I was like, I was really done. I was, I was kind of over it. A few of my other friends had already graduated, and um, the thing that kept me going was knowing that that I had some, that there was something to come. Like I feel like 
over the course of my life, like I always need something to be working towards and I always need something to be next. Like there are, there's always gotta be something that you're looking forward to. Like you always have to have a goal or an ambition or whatever. And for me, my senior year, I felt like I'd, I'd like either already accomplished all the things I could do in high school or I was just, I was, I was just tired of it. Um, and the thing that that got me out of that was knowing, okay, like next year I'm going to college and like that's going to take me to the next level. And I was excited about that. So, you know, I've had dips and, and downs and, and understanding that I've heard a lot of coaches say this before and it's true. It's like swimming is like a roller coaster. There's a lot of ups and downs. I guess life is like that. Um, and you just kind of have to roll with it and understand sometimes you're going to be motivated, sometimes not. But I mean, I always try to look at the silver lining and things, always be positive about them. And, you know, so far I think it's kind of worked out for me. So that's, that's all I'll say on that. Thank you so much for the question. I appreciate it. I hope that that gave you a little bit of insight. Maybe, maybe not. And that is it for our main topics today. And now we're going to go into our quick question section of the show. So once again, how do you get a quick question on the show? Follow me on Instagram. When I post a picture or whatever, you can just send me on a question. And um, that's how you do it. And our first question comes to us from Annie Hall, who asks, If you were not a pro swimmer, what do you think your job would be? You know, I don't, I, I feel like if I wasn't a pro swimmer, I would probably do something in video production because I love editing film. I really do. I love, that's my favorite part is editing vlogs. Um, I also, I love swimming so much. Like I, I'd probably be a coach um, in some capacity, you know, connected with swimming in some capacity. Um, thank you very much for the question. Uh, all right, our next question comes for us from Myra who says, what is your least favorite movie and that you have ever watched? Okay, you guys know how much of a movie fan I am. My least favorite movie, I there's a lot of movies I dislike. I can't think off off the top of my head, but this is a perfect moment for me to plug my latest podcast. I recently started this new podcast called Best Movie, Worst Movie with two of my friends, a professional film pundit. His name is John Campia. He's awesome. He lives in LA. He makes a lot of movie related videos. I love his show. And Robert Meyer Burnett, who is a director, producer, who also lives in Hollywood. He directed a Star Trek film. Film. He's a super cool guy. So. We started a podcast where we talk about, we take a category and we talk about the best movie of that category and the worst movie of that category. And our first episode, we talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, talked about the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, all those types of things. So if you like me, if you're like me and you're super into movies, please go check out that podcast. Once again, it's best movie, worst movie. It's on all podcasting platforms. Go check it out. Um, it's been a lot of fun for me to do something that's, you know, kind of outside swimming, but something that I love. Um, it's been really fun. So go check that out. Thank you for the question. And the next question comes from Alexander Piso, who says, um, hi, Cody. I've been watching your videos for a long time. Thank you very much. Um, I've seen your collapsible foam roller video and I want to know if it's durable because you uploaded it more than a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Real quick. The, what's the name of that company that makes the collapsible foam roller? I'm blanking on the name of it right now. Oh, Brazen? Brazen. That's the name of the company. Brazen makes a collapsible foam roller. I did a foam roller review video, not a sponsored video or anything. I mean, they just sent me a vi they sent me their product and was like, just try this out. I was like, okay. And I'll tell you what, I've had it for over a year and it is still durable. Like it's solid. I have not broken it and I've used it quite a bit. Um, so I, I do recommend that one for travel. Absolutely. Like it's, it's a solid foam roller. If you're going to buy one, if you've got the money, I, I recommend one of the hyperice vibrating rollers. Those are the great, I use that thing every day. Those are the greatest foam rollers out there, but the brazen one is really great. Like when I go to NC's next week, that's the one I'm going to bring. Cause it slips into my suitcase. So there you go. Thanks for the question. Next question comes to us from Sam. Flessner, who says, everyone on my high school team trains with a drag suit, but my club team trains with briefs. Additionally, neither my club team nor high school team wear caps when we train, but I always see the IU team wearing them in your vlogs. Why is this? Okay, so when I was in high, I, th I think it's cultural. I think like high school swimmers just, um, they don't wear caps. Uh, and like when I was in high school, I didn't wear a cap. I had a shaved head and I never wore a cap. And then in college, I was like, I, I just kind of wanted to grow my hair out just to do something different. And, um, so that's what I did. I started wearing a cap and I think all the guys in college, like at IU that wear caps when they swim, just pretty much wear it. Cause like they want to have, you know, not dead fried swimmer hair. They want to have nice hair. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the reason. Um, so yeah. And as far as drag suits, sometimes we turn to drag suits. Sometimes we don't, you know, it is what it is. 
And thank you very much for the question. Our next question comes to us from Brian Bull, who says, what was it like at the in the Hunter Breaststroke final at trials when the lights flickered on and off during your race? Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, at Olympic trials in Omaha, in the arena with 17,000 people, during my race, like the race that I qualified for the Olympics in, actually, it might have been semifinals, I don't know. One, one of the two, it was either semifinals or finals, Apparently, the lights went off during my race in the arena, and I didn't even notice. Like I had, I didn't know until I was interviewed after the race if we noticed or or what we thought. I mean, I guess I was just so in the zone. I don't even know how long the lights went off for. If it was just a, a second, two, whatever. But yeah, I just I didn't notice. So there you go. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I was I just locked in. Thanks for the question. Next question comes to us from Braden who says, what is lactate? You talk about this a lot in your in your videos. Yes, I do. Um, by the way, good luck at JOs, Brayden. Um, so, okay, when I say we're doing a lactate set in one of my vlogs, all that means is we're doing a set, I've tried to explain this before, we're doing a set where we are sprinting at max capacity. So you're going full effort. And what happens is when you sprint, your body produces lactic acid. And that lactic acid is the burn you feel in your muscles after kicking. Like if, so if you sprint a 50 and you feel your legs start to lock up and that burning sensation is a, is a buildup of what is called lactic acid in your body. And when we do a set, we call it lactic, a lactate set because the purpose of those sets is to spike your lactic acid levels so high that you're basically failing. So you go to failure and then you keep pushing and then you keep pushing and then you keep pushing and you try to maintain stroke technique and you try to maintain everything as well as you can when you're basically failing. And the idea is to incorporate that into a training cycle that allows you to push your lactic acid curve to the right, allowing you to basically withstand more pain and then swim at a higher level at a, at a faster threshold and basically drop time. So, so that's all I refer to. Some people call it different things. Some people call it like a quality set, whatever. We just say lactate, which just means, hey man, spike the lactate, you're, you sprint and the, point, the purpose is to, is to die. Is, is you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna fly, you're gonna die, and then you're gonna try to resuscitate yourself and keep going. Um, that's all it means. And those sets are fun. They're super painful, but they're fun. Thank you for the question. All right, next question comes to us from Lucas. Hi, Cody, my name is Lucas. I'm 11 years old from Montreal. Hey, what's up? I'm half Canadian. If you didn't know that, I'm half Canadian. My question is, since you swam the medley before, are you planning to swim these in the future? Yeah, I was an IMer for a long time. I did the two IM in college. That was my third event. Um, I might do it at a pro series meet here and there, just depending on the lineup. If it's last, I'll do it for fun, but ultimately I'm pretty much just training breaststroke at this point, so I don't plan on doing it seriously at all in the future. I'm just at that, my, that point in my career where I just pretty much just wanna do breaststroke. Um, and I think, that I've, I think that I've earned that. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Next question comes us from Gavin who asks, how do you style your hair? What shampoo and conditioner do you use? I, yeah, I'm baffled at how many people ask me that. Like, I don't really do anything with my hair, like at all. It's just, it is what it is. Um, I use a, I use a brand called o Orgix, o Orgix, it's like the, the roundish shaped bottles. I like the coconut milk one. That's it. And, uh, I just, I condition it after every practice. That's it. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. That's it. There's no secret. Thank you. Next question comes to us from Justin who says, I just wanted to say, I love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question. Do you think high school swimmers, uh, oh, what do you think of high school swimmers playing water polo when it is in season? Okay, so I love water polo, love water polo, and we've played water polo here at IU a bunch of times, and it's crazy fun, but the coaches actually don't really let us play it very much anymore because we get too competitive, and um, we get too feisty, and we don't want people getting hurt, and we had some people get hurt playing because... Like I said, we get really competitive and then people start gra scratching and clawing and pulling and jerking and throwing elbows and like, you don't want that. So I love water polo, it's fun. Um, I wish there was more of it. I wish it was a bigger sport. I really do, I wish there was more to it because it's it's so fun to watch really good water polo, water polo players play. Like it's, it's very fun to watch. Um, I love it. Thank you for the question. And our last question of the day comes to us from Izzy Wallen, who asks, how often do you rewatch the Harry Potter movies? Look at this wall behind me, check that sucker out. 
I mean, probably like once every couple months. I mean, every once in a while. It's it's like it's Allie's big go-to when she doesn't when she's you know really burnt out and tired of work and 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 wants to relax. Like that's what she wants to watch. Just one of the Harry Potter movies. Um, I try to reread the books like once a year. I crush those books. I love them. They're my escape. Um, but I, God, I love, I'm, I'm going to Harry Potter World in like two weeks. I'm going to LA for like a day or two because I've got this sponsorship thing out in LA that I'm going to and we're going to work it out so that Allie and I are going to be able to go to Harry Potter World. And I'm like ridiculously excited about it. We're probably going to bring our robes. I'm definitely going to buy a new wand. Um, it's going to be great. I'm super excited about it. Thank you for asking that question. We'll probably rewatch those soon. All right. Uh, that's it for the show today, guys. Um, Please make sure you share my videos, share my YouTube channel, um, share it with your swimmer friends. The growth helps me. Um, as always, make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Vlogs every Wednesdays, The Cody Miller Show every Friday. Ask me questions anytime. Do I have any other announcements? Oh yeah, check out that new movie podcast, Best Movie, Worst Movie. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, if you're a movie fan, I think you guys will enjoy it. And I think that's pretty much it. So uh, I appreciate if you've made it 35 minutes and you've just been listening to me talk. Uh, I never envisioned a world where people would just want to listen to me talk for 30 minutes. It's kind of weird. But anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, one other thing. Yes, I am competing in the Richmond um, Pro Series and I am competing in the Bloomington Pro Series meets. So uh, if you guys are coming, come say hi. It'll be great. And until my next video, I will see you later. Mm -hmm.